shopper, but the real facts and the hard truth are simply much more frightening. Tonight, in part one of our look at Omaha's ghosts, the story of Jake Bird and the string of haunted houses he left behind. This house in Omaha. Man, he killed a lot of people. The scene of unspeakable horror at the hands of an axe-wielding maniac. The chopper left a bloodbath in his wake and ghosts that continue to haunt. Give me my babies, oh, where are my babies? But that would come later. The story of the chopper begins here on North 28th Street. That's where police found the body of a 74-year-old man murdered in his own bed. His head caved in with an ax. J.W. Blackman lived in this home on North 28th Street. On the morning of November 18th, 1928, he was butchered while he slept. Didn't rob him, but uh, just killed him with an ax. The story didn't make huge headlines and the public barely noticed, but that would change in the next 24 hours. And then, later on, he attacks this couple, the two women, sisters. Gertrude Resso and her 19-year-old sister, Creta Brown, were fast asleep the following morning when the chopper invaded their home on South 41st Street. Or he came in on them and attacked them and axed them. And he didn't kill the children. By now, Omaha had hit full panic. Children stayed indoors, bloodhounds sniffed for clues. Even prohibition officers worked the case. An ax murderer going around Omaha axing people. For the third morning in a row, the chopper sneaked into another home in the early morning hours, attacking his next victim, Harold Stribling, as he lay in bed at his Carter Lake home. Stribling's wife begged the chopper to stop, and for some reason, he did. The young couple miraculously survived the attack. They later identified the chopper, a man named Jake Bird, a drifter from Louisiana. Bird spent 12 years in an Iowa prison and was released for good behavior. Only days later, in Tacoma, Washington, someone hacked two women to pieces with an ax. Cops arrested Jake Bird at the scene. Eventually, Bird admitted to almost 50 ax murders in more than 10 states. Moments before his execution in Walla Walla, he put a curse on everyone involved in his case. And within a year, seven of the eight men involved, including the judge, prosecutor, and even the hangman, died mysteriously. Incredibly, the story doesn't end there. Years after Gertrude Resso and her sister were killed in their home on 41st Street, strange voices could be heard in the house. My baby was not an ugly voice, a very copacetic voice. Other owners of the home say Gertrude Resso's ghost was looking for her two children who survived the brutal axe murders. To me, I thought it was kind of cool. Jim Beck bought the house on 41st Street in 1984. And if you think living in a haunted house bothers him, just take a look at his bookshelf. I've seen the shadows and look, and I mean, there wouldn't be nothing there the second time I looked, but I've seen shadows. But still, Jim Beck knows that some shadows never fade away, and some houses remember more than others, all of which makes Jim sometimes wonder if this house picked him. I never want to get rid of this house. I love this house. When he was finally executed in the late 40s, Jake Bird announced that everyone involved in his conviction would die before him and would be waiting for him at the pearly gates. And within a year, five otherwise healthy men would mysteriously die from a heart attack. Well, if you still don't believe in ghosts, by this time next week, you will. Next Sunday on the KPTM 9 o'clock news, we'll take you inside the famous Joslin Castle on 39th and Davenport Street in Omaha. We'll show you why hundreds of people are absolutely convinced that an otherworldly presence lives in the castle. We'll have proof of some chilling tales and a popular medium will reach out to the spirits on the other side. That's next Sunday, right here on the 9 o'clock news. We explore the ghosts inside the Joslin Castle in part two of Omaha's Ghosts. And that's tonight's installment of Omaha's Ghosts. Aaron? All right, thanks, Pat. I think we need more lights on in here, everyone. Well, the day's top national